what what would be three things uh, in your in your first years in the Senate that you where you would like to see yourself be particularly effective? Well, first, I, I would like to be one of the folks up there who could advocate to the American people in a big way the connecting the dots between energy policy, global warming, security, and jobs. And I think there is an enormous. Uh, we sometimes, you know, I think the threat of global warming is huge. It's real. It's now. But sometimes we on the Democratic side often talk about fear. Well, I think this is the new patriotism. I think this is the new job opportunity. And, and how we make that case to the American people, I'd love to be part of that. Secondly, I'd love to be part of an effort to forge a national competitiveness plan. I think it's 2007 in this country. We don't have any competitiveness plan. How are we going to really long What, what term, is a competitiveness plan? Well, a competitiveness plan? plan that would say, how do we reform health care? Because mm -hmm. you know, we, for too long, have argued health care on the basis yeah. of a morality issue. Mm -hmm. it, it is immoral. We have 48 million Americans without health insurance. But it's also, if we can't solve health insurance, health problems, health care costs in this country, no American business can compete with $3,000 cost per employee more mm -hmm. than anybody else in the world. Education, our key to economic prosperity is going to be the most educated, most innovative, most innov entrepreneurial workforce. How do we take some of the ideas we had in Virginia and the best practice around the country, bring them around to the whole, to the whole country? Mm -hmm. Intellectual capital, creation, protection, that's going to be where we add our value. People need to see that there's a plan here. Mm -hmm. That would be a second area. Um, obviously fiscal policies, or security, a host of other areas, but there's, there's one other area that I, that I would, and, and again, it's perhaps even presumptuous um, to say that as a, as a freshman that you could take on, um, but I hope and pray that whoever is the next president will make a big ask of the American people. If I took away one thing from my 11 months of looking at national office, it was this. I got asked at one point or another, because especially mm -hmm. when I was in those living rooms in Iowa and right. New Hampshire, People were a little suspect of me, and I was a business guy. I'd worked in a bipartisan way. I was from Virginia, so they always wanted to check out my Democratic bona fides, and they try to say, you know, tell me what you dislike or disagree with the president the most on, and expecting me to bash him. And you know, listen, I got a lot of policy differences with the president, but my biggest problem with this president is he hasn't trusted in the character and resolve of the American people enough, and that we can ha we can handle the truth and we can be called to some common cause. What this country, I believe, is yearning for is us for us to stop being D's and R's and red and blue and actually get the country fixed. And whoever makes that biggest call, yeah. a call that the, at first your old colleagues from the media will say, that's crazy because you can't ask the American people to, you know, to make some sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I think this country is ready for some shared sacrifice. And well, John I would Kennedy love to be asked part of that. it of them a long time ago. And John uh, Kennedy did. I think uh, President Reagan did when yeah. we took on communism. Yeah. I think Clearly, Truman did when he thought about rebuilding Europe. Clinton did when he said we're going to take on the budget. That's when we're at our best. And this country needs a win more than it needs a partisan Did you think we were at our country. best after 9-11, the way we responded to that? I think that, that we were at our best, that there was, we were at our best in terms of coming together. What happened but that to that? Moment, but that moment was not taken. Whose if fault that, is that? Well, I believe part of that has to lie at the feet of the foot of the president. Mm -hmm. If the president had said, you know, after this tragedy, we will never again be dependent upon uh, the funding sources on, on the energy issue that has funded yeah. some of these tariffs, everybody would have done their part. Another issue that you've been involved in is stem cell research. Mm -hmm. and I think it's got a personal connection Absolutely. to you, doesn't it? I've got a mom with Alzheimer's and a daughter with uh, diabetes. Yeah. This is not a political issue for me. Well, it's, it, it, but you could, you, could, you could use your personal um, story and push it further, don't you think? Do you see that as an well, opportunity? Absolutely. I, I mean, mean it, it what, is, what difference could it make for your mother? What difference could it make for your daughter? Well, I think the host of people who've been afflicted with with you know, diseases that stem cell, and I still believe embryonic stem cell mm -hmm. holds some of the greatest potential. To unlock that potential, it's remarkable to me that in 2007 again, we have at least some in this administration. I'm not saying all that only seem to have an anti-science bias, mm -hmm. not only on stem cell. But if you look at the decision in some areas that we're advocating, you know, moving away from teaching evolution in schools, when you have the Terry Schiavo case, when you have this host of issues that has almost this, you know, the members coming out of the administration mm -hmm. who are in positions around science, who have been said, you know, their positions on global warming, yeah. saying they haven't been able to speak scientific data mm -hmm. because it's been had political constraints. You know, that's pretty scary. And that, you know. Do you think conservatives can be brought around on this issue? Yes. Yes. Um, 
your family, um, your mother, um, is she, how far along is she? Apparently it's, she hasn't spoken in seven years. Uh, and she is uh, in my, you know, um, she's incontinent, mm -hmm. she can't move very well. You know, my dad's one of the, that World War II generation who I've been blessed with financial resources. He takes care of her 24-7. My sister comes in and works. So she lives with, at home they with They live at home. You know, mm -hmm. we could, again, I'm blessed enough to have any kind of mm -hmm. care, but he wants to do it with my sister and a couple other ladies that come in and help. I was just up there on Friday. And it's, um, you know, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy not only because it happened to my mom, but what's happening to my dad now. Right. And it just, the you know, strain the, on a oh, family. Oh, my gosh. I could, not, I could not imagine. The respect I have for anybody who's a caregiver in that situation is yeah. unlimited. And for you, when you started to realize you were losing your mother, what was that like? That to have her moment, there and you know, gone at the same time? Well, it was to see her fade so quickly and mm -hmm. to see, you know, my youngest daughter is, uh, is 13, you know, and, and she has very few memories of, right. other than my mom when she kept repeating the same story 17 times every, you know, probably right. with some of you in this room who've got relatives who, yeah. you know, you go through that. And, and, the fact that if there was ability to find a, a cure, and it, you know, and it's not just, it's not just. There's a host of other um, diseases that, that right, stem cell that. research mm -hmm. research could benefit from. I just think, that, you know, we got to do it. When was your daughter diagnosed? My daughter was diagnosed um, at age eight. Mm -hmm. uh, she is uh, now 17. She'll be 18 in a few weeks. Um, you know, and I've seen her uh, as well go through um, enormous challenges. Have you found that, has she found that easy to live with? Have oh, you? How can, you know, how can any teenager... Or has she adapted, I guess? I well, she's, a, listen, she's adapted. She mm -hmm. plays on the tennis team. She's mm -hmm. a good student. She's a great kid, you know, but, um, uh, but it's for scary. years before she had a pump that had to, uh, you know, check herself four or five times a day for her blood sugar, give herself shots three or four <laughs> times a day, you know, always question what she could eat and when she had to eat, mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, if there is a potential for a cure, and those of us who've been touched by people with, uh, with family members who've got diabetes, uh, particularly juvenile diabetes, uh, you know, they've been talking about a cure for 50 years, but um, yeah. you know, there are some breakthroughs. So you just got to hope. 